Hello, welcome to part 14 of Clinical Physiotherapy MCQ series. Let's move to our 66th question. A patient was recently diagnosed with fibromyalgia. Which of the following is the most appropriate intervention plan for general strengthening for this patient? Option A, low resistance, low repetition. Option B, low resistance, high repetition. Option C, high resistance, low repetition. Option D, high resistance, high repetitions. And the answer is... Option A, low resistance, low repetition. Explanation to this question is, Patients with fibromyalgia are not able to tolerate strengthening programs that involves either high repetition or high resistance. Therefore, only low resistance and low repetition would be potentially beneficial for this patient's population. Now let's move to our 67th question. A patient has spinal cord injury that resulted in damage to sacral segment and disruption of the sacral reflex arc. The patient is most likely to have which of the following characteristics? Option A. Voluntary control of the defecation. Option B. Tonic contraction of external anal splinter. Option C. Flaccidity of pelvic floor musculature with sacral segment disruption. Option D. Permanent absence of gastrocolic reflex. And the answer is... Option C, flaccidity of pelvic floor musculature with sacral segment disruption. Explanation to this question is, the external anal splinter and pelvic floor muscle supplied by S2, S3 and S4 are composed of striated muscle fibers. They receive somatic intervention from sacral cord segment 2 through 4. With damage of the segments, the sphincter and the pelvic floor muscles remain flaccid. The individual loses of voluntary control of defecation. The gastrocolic reflex mediated by the intrinsic nerve system of GI tract returns after resolution of spinal shock. Moving to our 68th question, a patient is sent to physical therapy with an order for training with a cane. The patient has sprained angle and progressed from crutches ambulation to requiring a cane along with a air cast. Which of the following would be proper utilization of a cane for this patient? Option A. Use it on the same side as the angle injury. Option B. Use it on the opposite side of the angle injury. Option C. Use it during the stance phase. Option D. Use it during the push off phase. And the answer is... Option B, use it on the opposite side of the angle injury. Explanation to this question is, when utilizing a cane, the patient should always use it on the opposite injured side. This is necessary for balance during ablation. Now move to our 69th question. A patient is referred to physical therapy with a diagnosis of frozen adhesive capsulitis of right shoulder. You perform physical therapy for one week and now you are going to remeasure the joint range of motion. Which of the following would you expect the capsular pattern restriction to be in the glenohumeral joint for this patient? Option A. Internal rotation is limited more than external rotation. Option B. External rotation is limited more than internal rotation. Option C. Adduction is limited more than external rotation. Option D. Flexion is limited more than external rotation. And the answer is... Option B. External rotation is limited more than internal rotation. Explanation to this question is... A patient with adhesive capsulated would have an capsular pattern in glenohumeral joint in which the external rotation is limited more than internal rotation. Now move to our 70th question. A physical therapist is evaluating the cranial nerve of a child who has medulloblastoma. The child's right eye deviates medially. This child has impairment of which of the following cranial nerve? Option A. Oculomoto, that's third. Option B. Trochlea, that's fourth. Option C. Abducent, that's sixth. Option D. Vagus, that's tenth. And the answer is... Option C, abducent, that's sixth. Explanation to this question is, the oculomotor nerve controls the inferior medial eye muscle. The trochlear nerve controls inferior lateral eye movements. The abducent nerve controls lateral eye movements. Damage to this nerve causes the eyeball to deviate medially due to weakness of the lateral rectus. The vagus nerve does not control the eye muscle. 
So that's all for today. If you need further clarification, check the description box and give your feedback in the comment box. If you like this MCQ session, do subscribe to this channel for more videos. Thank you.